Have you ever wondered why betrayed spouses hesitate to seek counseling? Despite the pain of infidelity, many avoid the one thing that can help them heal. And today we're uncovering the reasons behind the reluctance and how to overcome it. Hey, I'm Asani Pettiford, an infidelity recovery specialist with 20 years of experience, 15 books, and over a thousand restored marriages. And I'm here to guide you through proven strategies and expert advice. So let's get started. First, let's talk about the initial shock. Infidelity is like an emotional earthquake, shaking the very foundation of a relationship. And for many, this immediate response is to shut down and to retreat into a shell. And counseling oftentimes feels like a foreign and intimidating concept when you're dealing with trying to process the betrayal. Interestingly enough, studies have shown that 60% of betrayed spouses initially refuse counseling. And so it's not uncommon for them to feel this way, but it's our job to unpack these hurdles that they're experiencing. Now, the number one thing that most betrayed spouses struggle with, especially after finding out about an affair, is this feeling of ambivalence. They don't know what they wanna do. Do I stay? Do I go? Do we separate? Do we divorce? And because they're being pulled in all different types of directions because of influences and thoughts and feelings and emotions, they wind up doing nothing, but the last thing they want to do is pursue counseling because they're not yet ready to make a decision. They feel like I need to know what I want to do before I enter into the counseling process when the counseling process is there to guide them through a journey to determine what they want to do. Number two, emotional overwhelm. When you're flooded with feelings of hatred and depression and sadness and anxiety and all types of insecurities, you are so overwhelmed and soaked and saturated in emotions that it's hard to think straight, it's hard to be logical, it's hard to be pragmatic, and the counseling process may try to thrust you out of that season that you're not ready to leave yet. And so until you feel like you've got a grasp of your own emotions, you're not necessarily ready to enter into counseling. The third thing is zero desire to fix it. I'm pissed. I don't like what happened, I don't like you, I don't see any hope for our future, this relationship is over. The last thing I wanna do is fix this relationship. Why, so that you can win? So not only did you betray me and got what you wanted, now you want me to stay, work on the relationship so you can get more of what you want? And so because it seems as if this is all about you, this is the last thing that I wanna do. Number four, they're just not ready to do the work. Listen, at the end of the day, this is gonna require a whole lot of heavy lifting. We say all the time that the key to your marital restoration is your personal transformation. And truth be told, the betrayed spouse may not be ready to do the work. In fact, they may even consider it unfair. Like, I didn't break this marriage, you broke it when you had your betrayal. And that betrayal got you what you wanted. And so now you want me to do the work in this relationship to remain, to give you more of what you want. So the perception is that counseling benefits the unfaithful partner, not the betrayed partner. Number five, trust issues. Not only do they struggle to trust their partner, they really struggle to trust themselves. For how could I have been in a relationship and all of this happened under my nose and I had no clue about it? So because they're in doubt and in question about everyone and everything, they're certainly untrusting of the counseling process. Number six, shame and embarrassment. This is a huge thing because there's a stigma, right? There's a label placed on individuals and couples who've experienced infidelity in their relationship. And it would be easier to stick my head in the sand to imagine that it never happened before than to deal with the pain and the reality of what has happened. And so to avoid the shame, they rather avoid the process of counseling altogether. The final reason why betrayed spouses struggle with the counseling process is because they're suffering from a sense of hopelessness. They've gotten to the point where they truly believe that the relationship is beyond repair, that it's gone too far, too many things have happened, there's no pathway forward. And so they've given up in their minds, and so why pursue a process if we inevitably know that it's not gonna work out? So their level of belief has been significantly challenged by the betrayal. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more. 
And if you're a couple in crisis, on the verge of a divorce, or struggling with the pain of infidelity, and you're interested in working with me one-on-one, -on -one, or would like to attend one of our last chance weekends, go to the website couplesacademy.org or click the link in the description for a free discovery call and let's see how we can help you today. Remember, healing is possible. Counseling could be a powerful step towards recovery, so don't let fear hold you back. Take that step today.